Today is one of the more interesting days in the church year because there's a couple different ways we can think about All Saints Day. And the, my favorite way of kind of thinking a little bit about All Saints Day is to think of it as a bit of a funeral. And I mean that in the sense that on Days like today, we still remember those who have gone before us in the faith, but we also celebrate the victory that they have realized in Christ Jesus. Because All Saints Day is the celebration of, well, all of the saints. It's a time when we remember what we call the church triumphant, the church who has finished their work on earth and rests in Christ Jesus. And we remember that, well, we remember their stories. The stories of faith that we have with them. The parts of our lives that we shared with them. And we remember their place in God's story. And that's one of the most important aspects of this day for me is that we remember God's story. We remember the things that God has done through the lives of those people that have gone before us. We remember those who have died in Christ and are, we remember that they're still part of the church. And I think that on days like All Saints, it's very important for us to remember that when we come to the Lord's table later in the service, we're not just taking communion with ourselves, but we are taking communion with them as well. All those who have gone before us in faith, when we come to the Lord's feast, small taste of the feast that it is, we're joining them in the eternal feast. When we sing hymns and songs of praise to God, we join in that eternal praise. Our little bit of an offering now is part of the great chorus that is going on in heaven. It's a mystery we can't fully understand, but moments like these join the church together and remind us of the big story. Because as we are joined to this part of eternity, remember that God's story has always been one of life. The story of the work of God through humanity and the saints who support it are all here to remind us that God is a God of life. And so we celebrate the saints' eternal life even as we hope for our own in the future. And we celebrate the parts of God's story that these saints took part in. We celebrate their witness of God. We celebrate the God who called them to bear that witness. We celebrate that they are saved in Christ and we celebrate the God who saved them. And some of the saints we celebrate are big today. We celebrate saints like Martin Luther, not just because he was an, a, an influential person in the 16th century, but we celebrate him because he preached God's story and reminded people that salvation is something that God does for us and not something that we have to do on our own. I celebrate a saint like my grandma, not because she was great and wonderful, although my grandma definitely was, but because she showed what it's like to live out God's story. Because we are all part of God's story, and the saints are the ones who have reached, well, let's call it the end of book one and the beginning of book two. And we celebrate because God includes the saints and us in telling and making his story. God desperately wants us to be a part of the story that he writes. He wants to include us in the story of redemption of all that is because that's what God has always done. The Bible contains those parts of God's story that is full of extraordinary and ordinary people of faith. It's God using Moses and Ruth and Elijah and Peter and Paul and so many others. But the Bible also isn't all of God's story. 
There are countless stories of saints that have a part in the great story of God that we don't have a record of in the Bible. And most of these stories we'll only hear when we ourselves join the saints triumphant. But these stories are also important because this, and I think the most important stories of them all are the ordinary ones. The ordinary stories of faith that we all have of those people in our lives that told us God's story. The people in our lives who were part of God's story. It's the story of a surprise gift from someone when you needed it. It's the story of someone who sends you a card when you needed help. The stories of comfort, the stories of God's love that are just ordinary, but are still part of God's story. They show who God is in these stories. And that's what the Christian life is all about. We add to the story of God by what God calls us to do. Our contributions to the story now will be part of someone else's All Saints Day celebration. Just like those stories that we celebrate today are part of ours. And that's why I like days like today so much. That's why I like All Saints Day because it's, it's those reminders that even though we talk about the big stories all the time, the little ones are sometimes even more important. Because the little ones are the ones that matter to us. The places that we can look to and say, God used that person for me. It's where we can look at those small, insignificant to anyone else bits of God's story and celebrate them and rejoice with all the saints in those stories. That's why I think thinking of today a bit like a funeral is kind of nice because that's what we do, right? When we go to a funeral, we share stories. Whether it happens, you know, when a couple people standing up all official-like during the service or just the conversations that happen afterwards. We share those stories of these people who we care about. Stories that have meaning to us, even if they might not have meaning to anyone else. That's All Saints Day. It's sharing those stories of my grandmother's faith. Sharing the stories of all of those people from the great saints who get their own special days all the way down to the saints that maybe in their own life didn't feel like they mattered. But we celebrate all of those stories. Not because, not just because they're great stories on their own, but because they're part of the big story. The story of God coming to earth and saving his people because of his love. So let's remember those stories of the saints in our lives. Remember that bit of God's story that he has written us into and celebrate all those people who have shown the world who God is in those stories, have told those stories, and rejoice that they have achieved their victory in Christ and that their story is now beginning anew with the next chapter, a chapter of eternal joy, peace, love, and hope without all the pains of this world because that's where the end of God's story is. The end, which is also, of course, the beginning because it's the end of life now, but the beginning of life forever.